I've always enjoyed taking you on my field trips to special places that I can't get you to with the school bus. And this is one of them. This is an old farmstead woods in western Massachusetts. And we're going to start at the family plot right here. And it's the family plot of Walter Babcock and his wife Betsy and several of their children. And uh, you can see that this is a forgotten cemetery. Walter and Betsy are buried here along with a couple of uh, their children in this family plot that suggests that the family was pretty well off and you can see their farm road right here and it extends back toward my pickup truck on the other side and their farmstead is just on the other side where I've got the truck parked. But we want to start out taking a look at Walter Babcock who died in 1863 September so just around the time of the Battle of Chickamauga, Walter Babcock lost his battle with the foe that will ultimately take us all out. And Betsy died in September of 1863, a week earlier. She was 73 and he was 83, and that's a coincidental thing. I think there was some kind of a flu or fever. Something was going on out here in the Berkshires during that time because... I've noticed that there are many people who passed away within just a, like, like out in Sheffield, there's two brothers that died about a week apart in 1863. So during the Great Civil War, something was going on with health that wasn't too cool for the people that were alive and made it through the war, thinking they were maybe safe on the home front. Here's Joseph, and his stone is up against this tree. Somebody's you know, jack the stones up. There's a stone over there. There's more over here that are um, under the under the sod, as they say. But uh, pretty poignant to see these kind of things. Let's check out where they lived and how it was that they ended up having the money to create such a uh, for this area magnificent family plot, complete with an obelisk. Right over here is the site of their old home, the cellar hole remains. And you can see uh, the yard is being colonized by white pines, which are one of the colonizer tree species. But look at this cellar hole. I've always been fascinated by cellar holes out here in the, uh, in the Berks. And we have them all over New England. And this is clearly a good sized cellar hole. And when you look at this, don't think that the home was built completely on the top of the cellar hole. Often these New England farmhouses were big and rambling so that the cellar hole would have been built um, under the main house. But then as they made more money, they would have put additions on. You can see the walkway down into the cellar hole there. But it's possible that the home itself extended out to where these white pines are growing. And instead of having a cell, you had crawl spaces. And you can sometimes find footers, you know, uh, flat rocks where they would have put their, uh, their beams, attached their beams. So look at this. Pretty fascinating. You can imagine people coming down into the this cellar and you can see uh, over on the other side right by the log a hoop a barrel hoop because you used barrels the way we use boxes and they were basically pasturing merino sheep and making some good money doing that but beyond that they were growing their own vegetables and tapping the maple trees you can see the big sugar maples that move up and down their property line here and they would have tapped those trees to make sugar and uh, storing that maple syrup maybe in a barn out here. I haven't walked around out in the back and looked for footers for a barn, but I do know they are in possession of something pretty cool right here is the old well. So take a look at that. Mm, it's been a dry summer, so we're talking about a 
20 foot drop down into the well there. And you're not going to want to do that. And sometimes I come here and people will put like this piece of metal or we'll put logs over the top of it. And I always move them because it's basically like creating a trap for a hiker or a hunter. Because what do we know about metal? What do we know about logs? Eventually they rust or they rot. And you know that's the last thing you want is to be part of your own looney tune and drop out of sight with nobody around to help you. A lot of times on these New England farmhouses, the well, and I'm looking at this, and it's probable that it's true here, the house would have extended by additions, and there would have been a porch here, and the well would have been under the porch. The old New England porch well trick. And as I look at the, uh, the lands here, you can see the old road extending back this way. That white pine colonizing the road. It's going to obliterate it in a little while. But if we follow the farm road, who knows what we're going to find. Look at the old barrel hoop right here. And we've got some um, maple syrup bucket, or just a regular bucket, and some kitchen items here, some pots and pans. There's more. A lot more. The old trash pile. And uh, we have a foundation here that probably would have been for the barn with a sugar maple tree here. It's actually fascinating. If you think about farms, just take a look at a farm today. And you'll see from a distance, it looks really cool, pristine, pretty. When you get close, you're going to see the farmers have old tractors and their old F-150 and washing machines and dryers and just farm equipment. It isn't working anymore, piled, piled, piled haphazardly. So a farm, when you get close to it, isn't as picturesque as it was from a distance because they don't bring their stuff to a dump. they got enough land to have their own dump. And I've always said, another man's trash is somebody's treasure. So some of you might really enjoy picking up one of these old maple syrup buckets and bringing it home for your Berkshire cottage. You can imagine, once upon a time, all around me, where I am now, would have been pasture for merino sheep during the great merino sheep craze of the 18-teens, 20s, 30s, 40s. Walter, who we just met, died at the end of the merino sheep mania during the American Civil War. That was the last gasp of it. And look at the stone wall over there, and it's going to go down in the back, and you can see it over here too. Stone wall that Walter either built himself with his kids, or <laughs> he brought in some Irishmen to do it. There were teams of guys building these stone walls during Merino Sheep Mania. It's pretty cool. And you can see this one's all falling down and None, you know, it's not going to hold back any sheep today. But look across over here. You got the wall here. And then the road, old abandoned road on the other side, another one. And these stone walls crisscross the property. Merino sheep mania made people a lot of money. And I'm sure the Babcock family benefited immensely, which is why ultimately they were able to afford such a magnificent family plot and obelisk. They made some money taking advantage of people's desire for soft, supple sheep's wool. So this is an old cellar hole, and I'll come back here another time with you, and we'll go for more of a walk in the fall when we'll be able to see further into the woods, and you'll get a lay of the land better. But now you see cherry trees and maples and oaks and colonizing white pines coming. And some little sick beaches suffering from our beech leaf disease right there. And uh, it's the kind of place that makes you think. Walter and his wife lived and died here. And they did quite well for themselves. And all we can do is remember. Why aren't there their descendants living here now? Answer. About eight miles away from here. To our east is a giant impoundment, a reservoir built to take care of the water needs of one of Massachusetts' largest cities. 
They always overbuilt those reservoirs, like Quabbin. They flooded portions of seven towns, took five towns right off the map to build this massive reservoir that has never come close to running dry. They overbuilt it. And there's an overbuilt reservoir about eight miles away. And this farmhouse and many others nearby were in the drainage. And so, by eminent domain, Walter's family lost the rights to their land. And they had a had to sell. A lot of the people that had to sell these properties were not happy. They left everything. The junk. They didn't do anything at all to try to clean it up. They just left their junk where it lay. And we'll investigate some more of these. But you'll notice that our government, when it gets its mind made up to do a project, doesn't seem to have a problem with a few people in the way of that project. They get them out of there one way or another.